You can't compete with Chinese. And just to get access to the sea, you need to negotiate. Culture is destiny. Geography is destiny. So maybe we shall just stop using the word post-Soviet. We are in a new Cold War era between China and the United States. Hello everyone, my name is Iftikhar Lodi. I am assistant professor at the Graduate School of Public Policy, Nazarbayev University. And I have been in Kazakhstan for four years. And my specialization is international relations, international political economy. Nice to meet you all. Hello guys, my name is Janibek Arinov. I am a postdoctoral scholar at the Graduate School of Public Policy, Nazarbayev University. Uh, I've been working at Nazarbayev University uh, since 2019 and I, my specialization is also international relations, Central Asian security and geopolitics. <music> Professor Loki, what do you think about Kazakhstan's geopolitical position between Russia and China or the bear and the dragon? Kazakhstan made a very, uh, very wise decision at the beginning in 1990s to not to become a satellite country for Russia or even for the United States of America. And uh, I personally like this uh, multi-vector policy. But the danger is that uh, these three major powers, particularly China and Russia, because both are the neighboring countries, their interests may not be aligned all the time. And uh, as a result, it's a, very, it's a very dangerous path that you need to walk, not just Kazakhstan, all the countries in the region, uh, they are walking a very dangerous path and there are always uh, demands on these countries from uh, these powers. And sometimes it is not easy to fulfill those demands and there is always a danger to make someone angry. So far, Kazakhstan surprisingly has been excessively successful in managing all the three powers. And I'm not just talking about China and Russia. But uh, let's see how far it can continue. Kazakhstan is a landlocked country in, in the world, right? I think the biggest landlocked country. So what are the pros and cons of this? Well, there is a standard economic theory. Uh, countries with uh, access to the ocean are, uh, uh, do grow uh, faster than those without access to the sea. But uh, that's not the main element, I think, the, in the modern era, as we all are witnessing uh, the Silk Road development, <laughs> Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, that factor would continue. I mean, theory after theory, empirical research has demonstrated it. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be a hurdle, a roadblock, which Kazakhstan would have to overcome. Uh, fortunately, Kazakhstan has abundant natural resources and it is in proximity of a big European market and uh, no matter what Chinese products have to go through Kazakhstan. So mm -hmm. being a transit country, having abundant natural resources, I think excellent opportunity to overcome the, uh, the roadblock that is uh, generated by being landlocked. Mm -hmm. What do you think, is the Soviet legacy still, still relevant in, in Central Asia? So I don't like this word because uh, a lot many times the genuine issues are not discussed mm -hmm. and uh, individual faults, organizational faults, they, they are blamed on Soviet legacy. I mean, yes, Soviet legacy, I accept it. But it has been 30 years, you could not do anything no reforms, 30 years Soviet legacy still continues. How far it will continue? I think the, there is no way Kazakhstan could ever get out of the in Soviet influence. Uh, I have spent most of my life in Singapore and uh, Lee Kuan Yew, the founding father of Singapore, he used to say, history is destiny. Culture is destiny, geography is destiny. 
historically geographically culturally it is not possible for kazakhstan and it would be unwise for kazakhstan to develop any kind of hostile relations with uh, russia yeah. all this space has been um, branded as post soviet for over 30 years now right so when this post soviet ends now some scholars kind of arguing should we start kind of talking about post post soviet period it's a very interesting point actually i i don't know why scholars uh, still using the word post soviet post soviet i mean one generation has gone by now why can't we just talk about uh, central asia yeah. or eastern europe why we still continue post soviet post soviet i think it's it's a very interesting point maybe you and i shall promote this post post soviet but the word soviet is still there yeah so maybe we shall just stop using the word post soviet What do you think uh, in terms of uh, foreign policy and in terms of uh, local culture and aspirations? Where does Kazakhstan stand? Some people tend to still believe, like, among younger generation, according to my kind of finding, uh, findings, that Kazakhstan still is a part of bigger European family. So another thing was that okay, they don't know the younger generation doesn't know about uh, what is Eurasian. Uh, they don't think they don't. clearly conceptualize what is Asia because for many Asia is different so the, the boundaries of Asia uh, are not clear so is Asia about China is Asia about uh, Vietnam is Asia about India is Asia about uh, Arab states and so on and so forth so being Asian also doesn't carry that much uh, meaning for, uh, for, for many younger generation But what is surprising for what was surprising for me is that uh, this younger generation tend to identify themselves more as a Central Asian. So for them, Central Asia has certain kind of meaning rather than Asian or Eurasian. What does it really mean to be among top 30 developed countries? Being among 30 developed countries means that um, uh, in terms of quality of life, I think it's more about the quality of life in Kazakhstan. I mean, obviously, Kazakhstan can't be among 30 in terms of GDP, kind of in general, because Kazakhstan is a small country in terms of its economy, right? But in terms of uh, life quality, I think that's what what uh, Kazakhstan um, seeks, uh, for instance, um, develop. in terms of education developed in terms of healthcare developed in terms of other kind of uh, spheres is third world war possible in the nearest future in the traditional sense of the war otherwise i believe the war is going on but in the traditional sense no superpower main attributes they define the rules they make the rules of the game what other key countries in today's global order so china russia and the united states of america india is trying to become one but it will take uh, ages is the un still relevant yes it is and uh, even if it is not uh, we should perceive it relevant and we should believe it relevant because the the other path is very very dangerous path why there are so many conspiracy theories i think the conspiracy theories do not occur in a vacuum i think there are certain driving forces behind many conspiracy theories be it local kind of agents be it political forces be it international forces i think every conspiracy theory has a, some kind of driver behind it and many often people follow those conspiracy theories when they need very easy explanations my advice to all young people would be to work hard the destiny requires hard work there is nothing achievable without hard work take interest in your society take interest in your country take interest in the world affairs the life is not all about uh, chai and dance and music and sleep we need to get involved seriously within our communities within our family within our country and with this w- world and for that i would invite 
those of you who are looking for future education i would like to invite you to join nazarbayev university graduate school of public policy maybe in reality political science or politics is a very complicated discipline with lots of very often competing interpretations so in order to make a choice make sure that you consider all the visions all the thoughts all the interpretations only based on that make your decision that's my advice